So we're going to do problem 11-23, and we have to take that loading right there, we have to draw the shear and the moment diagram. So first what we need to do, we need to figure out these reaction forces at A and B, because those the, they affect the um, shear and the moments values for that figure. So we're going to have an A and an, or a Y and an X, but the X doesn't matter because it's going to be zero. Um, so we have AY, we have BY, and then to find each of those triangular uh, intensity forces, we have to multiply the height times one half the base, so the area of a triangle. So it would be one half times 4.5 meters times 5 kilonewtons per meter. So if we go over here, um, I duplicated the figure, uh, like I said, the force of these triangles each is one half times 4.5 times 5 kilonewtons per meter. You end up getting 11.25 kilonewtons. And for a triangle, the center of mass is one third from the uh, base. And we don't care about how far it acts in the Y, we only care about how far it acts in the X um, for the moment equation. So one third of 4.5 is 1.5. So it, the first one's going to act 3 meters from A, the second one's going to act 1.5 meters from B. So for our Y equation, like I said earlier, we have AY plus BY minus 2 times 11.25, and then you end up getting that the sum of A and B is uh, 22.5. So when we go to our moment equation, we're going to take it about A, so we don't have to worry about AY or AX, um, because they pass through the line of action, so they're both, the moment is zero there. So we have to worry about the first 11.25, and the sign for both 11.25s are going to be the same. They're just going to be different moment arms. So if we look relative to A, these two will create a negative moment, because they go clockwise. So we're going to have a negative 11.25 times 3 minus 11.25 times 7.5 and then B is clockwise relative to A so that's positive so plus FB times 9 so we get 9 FB is equal to 118.125 kilonewton meters divide by 9 you end up getting that FB is 13.125 kilonewtons and AY once you solve that system up there is 9.375 kilonewtons. So we have our reaction forces. We can worry about the shear and the moment diagram. So I like to do shear first. So that's what I did, and then moment will come later. So this one's a bit odd. Um, to do this one, you have to find the shear at A. Uh, I named this arbitrarily C, and then B. So you want to find it here, here, and here. And you're going to notice that you're above zero here, and then you're below zero here. So at some point, it crosses zero. And for a complete graph, you're going to want to find that. And I'll explain how to do that later. So section one, um, I just you know cut it off. Shear points down. Moment rotates towards the top. Um, so shear at A, um, if we take it and we're going to cut it like right here, our only two forces are going to be AY up and V down. So AY minus shear is equal to zero. So your shear is actually equal to your reaction force at AY, and that's 9.375 kilonewtons. The shear at C, um, which I said arbitrarily, I made that right here where the uh, first intensity ends. Um, so if we look at this, we're going to have uh, the A, AY, and then we're going to have this, um, the result of this intensity, which I think, yeah, 11.25. So we're going to have AY plus or minus 11.25 minus V, like I had down here. AY minus 11.25 minus V is equal to zero. Solve for V, you get AY minus 11.25. You end up getting negative 1.875 kilonewtons. Like I said, you started above zero, and now let's see we're below zero. So it would be nice to find out where the shear is equal to zero, so we know where to mark that on the graph. So like I wrote over here, where is the shear equal to zero? Well, 
we have some point we know between A and wherever C is over here, it's zero. So we don't exactly know where we're going to be putting this force because we don't know if it ends where it's at its peak. We don't know if it's zero where it's zero. We don't know if it's zero in the middle. So we have to find a way to express this peak as a function of time. Um, this was bad work. Let me scratch this out. So we know that we have AY, which is our 9.375, but we need to uh, find a way to express that whatever portion of that triangle we have. So I use the similar triangle method. So imagine this is the one of the intensities. So we have the top is 5, goes 4.5 in the X. Um, wherever the shear is 0, we're going to have a smaller triangle. So X is the 4.5 as W is the 5. Or I did it the other way. 5 is the 4.5 as... Okay, sorry about that. Um, it doesn't matter, actually. You can relate in the same way. So 5 is the 4.5 as W is the X. So once you solve for X, or no, you solve. You want to solve for W because you want the height of that. We're going to know that the X is going to be however far along, and we can arbitrarily call it X. But we want that height. So we're going to solve for W, which would be that height, and we get 1.11X. So we know that wherever that triangle ends, it's going to be one half times x times the height, which we found 1.11x. That points down, and then we have the shear pointing down. So once we solve for the shear, we get 9.375 minus uh, all of this, and I simplified it. And we end up getting that it's zero at 4.11 meters, so we know where it crosses the x-axis. So we found A, we found C, and then we found where it's zero. So we're going to want to find all the way over at B, and that's just as simple as doing the same thing earlier. So section two, I made another section. Uh, the shear at B, so we're going to have AY pointing up, this intensity pointing down, and all the way at B, we're going to have the other intensity pointing down as well as the shear. So AY minus 2 times 11.25 minus V is equal to zero. So V is equal to AY minus 22.5. You end up getting that V, the shear, is equal to negative 13.125 kilonewtons. Taking all of our data, um, we can draw our shear. Shear is in kilonewtons, X is in meters. We have our point at zero, 4.11, our initial, and then we have our final. So that's our shear diagram. So now we need to figure out how to do the moment diagram. So I redrew it. So we're going to do it the exact same way, except we don't really need to worry about where it's zero. So we're going to figure out the moment at A. So if we think we section it off right at there, if we're taking the moment about A, it doesn't really, there's no moment arm of that. So the moment's going to be zero. Um, because if we're, going to, if we're taking the section right at A, there's no moment arm for this force to act. So it's only going to be the result moment from the section. So that's going to be zero. Simple enough. So let's find the moment at C. Remember that's the arbitrary point that I picked in the middle. So we have the result in moment. Um, and if we look at this being our pivot point, A, Y is going to create a clockwise rotation, so that's negative, and that's 4.5 meters away. Uh, and then whatever this is going to be, it's going to create a counterclockwise rotation. Um, so that would be positive, but since we're at C, we can take the whole value of this intensity, and from the shear diagrams, we figured out that's 11.25, and that, like I said, um, the centroid of a triangle is one-third from the base, so we multiply that by 1.25. Figure out the algebra, and you find that the moment at C is 23.3125 kilonewton meters. Now all that's left is figure it out at B. Um, it's the exact same thing. The resultant moment, um, A is going to create a negative moment, but now it's 9 meters away, so 9.325 times 9. The first uh, 11.25, they're both going to be positive because they'll create a counterclockwise rotation. First one is times 6 meters, the second one's times 1.5 meters. 
the moment there actually ends up being zero as well. So you get this parabolic shape for the moment equation. We have our zero, our other zero, and then we have the peak of 23 point, or 25.31 kilonewton meters. And uh, that's it for this one.